If you go to the Nantagi Valley today, you will see the still simmering lava field when the 2021 volcano burst into life. Red hot lava spewing from its crater. In August 2022, a new fissure in the Meridalia Valley opened and it began erupting again. You can still see this simmering off the top. I remember standing at the top. Honestly, you can look in any direction and it looks like a photographer's paradise. Look, I know I'm shooting film, but honestly, I did take my Nikon D800, which has been my trusted beast over the last decade. Neither the film or digital disappointed me here. Now a side cut here. I was umming and ahhing about what film to take with me. Actually I knew I wanted to shoot medium format but I also was very undecided on what medium format camera to take with me. I knew my Bronica was not going to disappoint with its stunning 75mm lens and also the ability to get 15 shots per roll. But then the Fuji GSW3 is literally made for landscape photography and it would be a photography sin not to take the sublime 6x9 mega negative size frames. For some reason I really wanted to shoot 6x6 too but whilst I love my Yoshika Mat 124G I couldn't see myself carrying it with the Fuji and the Nikon D800. Step in the Icon Zeiss Neta. This camera is literally a little G unit. Wait till you see what I got on this. Next level. Right what was I talking about before I started rambling about cameras again? Oh yeah the Nataga Valley is incredible. Just look at these shots that I took. For the first time in my life, I printed off the images and they are amazing. You have got to print off your work, guys. I have to say, it's so, so fulfilling. I have these up in my home, one right in front of me on this desk. I got some prints made for my website, so make sure you check them out and grab a print. Iceland was born in fire and ice, forged by intent volcanic activity that shaped its rugged landscapes. The islands emerged from the depths of the ocean as towering mountains of molten lava spewing ash and steam into the sky. Over time, the fiery eruptions slowed and cooled, leaving behind a land of black basalt and simmering geysers. Despite its hostile beginnings, life slowly took root in this land of extremes, clinging to the harsh terrain and finding sustenance in its unique geological wonders. Today, Iceland stands as a testament to the raw power of nature, a land forged from the fiery birth of the earth and shaped by the forces of the elements. Nestled in the heart of Iceland is a little known valley that is often overlooked by tourists in favour of more popular destinations. The Nataki Valley, located in the West Fjords region, is a stunning area of natural beauty that offers unique and authentic experience for those who visit. The valley is surrounded by towering peaks and is dotted with crystal clear lakes, waterfalls and glaciers. Visitors can hike along its numerous trails that wind through the valley, taking in breathtaking views and wildlife that can be seen along the way. Some of the most popular hikes include the trail to the stunning waterfall, which is surrounded by steep cliffs, and the trail to the top of the nearby peak, which offers panoramic views of the valley and beyond. Overall, the Natagi Valley is a hidden gem that offers a unique and authentic experience for visitors to Iceland. Whether you're looking for a peaceful escape from the crowds or an adventure in the great outdoors, this valley has something to offer everyone. So if you're looking for an off-the-beaten-path destination in Iceland, and the Taggy Valley is the perfect choice. My experience at Golf Fuss Waterfall was a bit of a challenge at first. I had found the perfect spot to take my shot my Fuji GSW3, but the shutter and the film advance got stuck. I quickly had to adjust the camera and head down to the waterfall to capture something closer. However, I was able to take a pleasing shot with my Zeiss Icon. The image was almost a perfect triangle, with the water creating a painterly effect with a semi-blurred sky and waterfall. Eventually, I got my Fuji working at the waterfall itself. The area can be crowded, as seen from my previous images of people walking down to golf us. It's important to be careful as the surface is wet and slippery, so I'd advise bringing some sturdy, vibram soled walking boots. I love my scarfer boots as they've never failed me on difficult terrains. I was happy with the final shot considering the sun was low and almost directly hitting the foreground I was capturing. The shadows were a bit lost, but I was still pleased with how Sinistel 800 team performed with the sky and light rays coming through. The image shines even more when converted to black and white. I was captivated by the motion of the water falling and the fog like spray crashing against the darkened landscape. I also managed to get another shot with the Zeiss from a different angle. The colours were a bit better as I moved slightly to the left. I like the detail on the tourists in the top right corner of the frame who were looking down at the waterfall. Most people will visit Stroko Geysir when in Iceland and you should certainly make it one of your trips up there as well. On the way back I remember looking out the window and happened to chance on this farm in the distance. It wasn't too off piste so I headed out to explore what I could find. Efsted Alor Dairy Farm is a little gem of a farm for sure. Our first arrival looks so 
different to what you might find at any other modern farm with a barn and some old tractors rusting away. As you enter the ice cream parlor, you will see a large window with a view of a barn with the cows there. Easily missed, however, is a smaller window on the left where the little calves are resting. It is very, very adorable. The ice cream is fresh and I could probably work through all their varieties at a frightening pace. I know I will be back at some point, so this time I left some for later. The farm is known for its local produce, including dairy products, meats and vegetables, offering visitors the opportunity to taste the flavours of Iceland's countryside. And now it also has a restaurant and a bar upstairs too. The farm offers a glimpse into Iceland's farming heritage, showcasing the country's rich history and connection to the land and beyond the wonderful ice cream and the cute calves. It is located in a stunning and scenic area, surrounded by lush green fields and rolling hills. I promise I'm not getting sponsored for this video, but the farm also offers accommodation, including a cozy cottage, apartments and rooms in the main building. So if you have had a long day and you're looking for a nightcap, this could be the ideal pit stop or base for exploring the surrounding area. I was on a bit of a breakneck tour around Iceland and admittedly I would definitely have liked to have at least a day or two pottering around the capital Reykjavik. What I do know is that walking down to the downtown area there are lots of museums that may be of interest such as this Bond museum and there's even a great little fish market area with colourful huts everywhere. I got a shot or two but ideally I would have had a lot more fun with a bit more time available and the mountains in the backdrop are pretty cool too. You can't come to Iceland and not experience a glacier walk as Solhamajokl. Over the past hundred years, this glacier has been slowly but surely receding away. The glacier has retreated over two kilometers since the late 1890s and is expected to retreat another eight kilometers by the end of 2100. It is a timely reminder of how the climate is changing and experiencing it firsthand is a sobering as well as eye-opening experience. Located in the south of Iceland, Sotlhamajoko Glacier is a popular destination for hiking and ice climbing and you can get on it with some guided tours with all the gear to go with it. On arrival, you'll get suited and booted up and get run down on the safety before heading out. I got here first thing in the morning and would strongly recommend that you do as well. The early morning light is gorgeously warm and provides a wonderful contrast to the deep ice blue of the glacier itself. Have your camera strapped secured. I would recommend getting one of those peak design ones, but I'm sure there's lots of equally well designed options out there too. On the way out to the glacier, you will have an ice axe in one hand and you'll need to keep your camera hands free. Having good strap in place will give you those precious seconds to be able to take or capture a shot when you do occasionally stop. The glacier is home to several ice caves which are formed by melting and refreezing of glacial ice. These caves are a unique and stunning sight and only accessible for a few months a year. The surrounding area is just as beautiful with its rugged terrain, towering cliffs and rolling hills. It's a perfect spot for taking photos and exploring further. Located further along the south coast of Iceland, Nevik is Reynes Fiara Beach and it's a breathtaking black sand beach formed by volcanic activity. Activity. Safety first. If you have ever had the opportunity to visit or looking in the future, then take heed of the safety advice everywhere in Iceland. Whether you're driving and come across an epic location or on here on this beach, you will find lots of signs giving warnings on whether you should go further or be careful. Most of us will willfully ignore these warnings, but you do so at your own peril. Warning signs are not the same as they are in our home countries. Reynes Fiara Beach itself has huge signs explaining the risks at this beach. Last year, a man died when he decided to go for a swim in the afternoon. Luckily, his wife survived after being pulled out. They were on an organised tour. The waves here are known as sneaker waves, but in other parts of the world, they may be called king or rogue waves. Essentially, they're very large coastal waves that can suddenly appear in a train of smaller waves. The sneaker waves are much larger than those in between and reach way further. The time between the giant waves can vary. Sometimes one comes right after the other, or there can be up to tens of smaller waves in between. The waves it can rise very fast just before hitting the shore. This happens because the ocean floor deepens rapidly away from the coast. In addition, the ocean currents are very powerful and add to the danger. The black sand on Rainis Farrow Beach is created from lava that is cooled and shattered into small pieces. And this is what creates that unique and dramatic contrast with the crystal blue water of the Atlantic Ocean. The cliffs surrounding Rainis Farrow Beach are made up of basaltic columns, which are hexagonal rock formations that were created when lava flowed into the sea and 
cooled rapidly. These formations are spectacular and perfect backdrop for taking those iconic images. Another one of those most iconic features are the two large rock formations that rise out the ocean. These stacks are believed to be trolls who once turned to stone when they tried to help drag a ship to shore. If you have more time to spend here, be sure to look out for the variety of bird species including puffins and guillemots. These birds nest in the cliffs and can be seen flying in and out of their nests making it a memorable wildlife experience. I love visiting this beach, it's unique and it's a natural wonder. It's a must for a visit to Iceland. Please be safe, make sure that you follow all the safety guidelines. Also located in the southern region of Iceland, Selje Landsfloss is a breathtaking waterfall that is a must visit for anyone visiting the country. It's unique and majestic beauty, Selje Landsfloss is one of the Iceland's most popular tourist destinations and a symbol of the country's natural beauty. Its unique feature is that it's one of the few waterfalls in the world that visitors can walk behind. This creates a unique and memorable experience as visitors can see the water up close, feel the mist in their faces. If you have a little bit longer to explore, there is another another waterfall located nearby and that is a beautiful hidden waterfall inside a narrow canyon and it can only be accessed through a narrowing in the opening of the rock so make sure that you go and check that out if you've got that additional time. Let me tell you about one of my all-time favourite places to visit in Iceland, Thingvellir National Park. It is an absolute marvel that will leave you in awe of the power in nature and its beauty. As you drive about 40 kilometres northeast from Reykjavik you'll find yourself standing at the edge of the rift valley that separates the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates. It's amazing to see the plates slowly but surely pulling apart, creating stunning landscapes of fissures, cliffs and lakes that will take your breath away. Thingvallatan, the largest natural lake in Iceland, is an absolute dream to behold. But that's not all. The park is also home to several other small lakes that will mesmerise you with their crystal clear waters and serene beauty. But the park isn't just a feast for the eyes, it's got a rich history too. The stunning location was the birthplace of Icelandic democracy as it was the location of Iceland's first parliament, the Althingi, which was established in the year 930. The Althingi was held annually at Thingvellir until 1798. The park still resonates with the echoes of Iceland's past. It's no wonder that Thingvellir National Park became a national park in 1930 and a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2004. It's a place that deserves all the recognition it can get. I love this set of images in all the different formats. Choosing Cinestill 800T was perfect for the sunset and the cooler tones. The digital frames have just blown me away too with their clarity and depth. After several nights of dreary overcast weather, Iceland held something very special in store for us. The anticipation was palpable as we eagerly awaited the final night where the aurora would dance continuously all night long in the sky. I was running back and forth as I prepared to capture this awe-inspiring moment, rolling up none other than some precious ectochrome on my Fuji GSW3. As I began to shoot, I felt a sense of excitement and nervousness. This was my first time shooting astrophotography on film. It was certainly a baptism by fire, but I was determined to capture the magic of the aurora no matter what. When I looked back at the images on my burnt off roll and subsequent rolls, I was filled with a sense of wonder and joy. Despite the imperfections, the burn marks on these images only added to their beauty. Holding the positives in my hand brought the moment back to life in a way that digital simply couldn't match. It was a truly magical experience that left me feeling grateful and inspired. For you at home, feeling the pinch of film prices, there is a glimmer of hope. The newer iPhones can capture the aurora. It was both shocking and wonderful to learn this firsthand. Certainly, this opens up a world of nighttime photography to those who may previously have been unable to access it. By any measure for me, this is wonderful to know and I hope it is for you too. As I look forward to the future, I feel excited about what the next few years hold for photography. But one thing is for sure, the magic of the aurora would always hold a special place in my heart. I hope you've enjoyed my photography feast. These were some of my favourite images from my travels. These moments captured in time hold so much meaning for me and I'm grateful for the opportunity to share them with you. I have poured my heart into capturing these images and I'm honoured to offer them to you as limited edition prints. By purchasing one of these prints, you're not only supporting my work here on YouTube, but you're also bringing a piece of the world into your home. Imagine gazing at these images each day, letting them transport you to far off lands and remind you of the beautiful 
beauty that exists in the world. I believe photography has the power to touch our hearts, to move us in ways that words cannot. And it's my hope that these images will do just that, inspire you, uplift you, and remind you of the beauty that surrounds us. It's a simple way to support my work, and I promise it will look amazing in your home. Thank you for joining me on this photography feast, and for allowing me to share my passion with you. I was flying out of London Stansted today. I thought it wouldn't be a problem taking my film through, but when I handed it over to have it hand inspected, the guy at the security desk, he was very adamant for it to go through the x-ray machine. Now, in the past, I've had film go through an x-ray machine, but it's not come out. I was pretty firm to have film expected, so just be aware that if you are flying out of London airports, you might have some difficulty in doing so, but just make sure that you ask politely and always be honest and frank with the, the people that are serving you. They're trying to do their job and you just want to go and do your photography. So always be polite and kind when you are asking for something to be done which is going to help you. And just a word of note, I found that Understand Stand was a little bit more of a struggle than with other airports that I've been to in London. Let me know if you've had the same sort of struggles. Overall, please with the first day's worth of shooting, then let's see what the next couple of days bring.